Hi, it's The Wire. It is Friday, July the 12th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Right now, in my favorites folder, it's 5.48 p.m. Pacific time. Right now, in my favorites folder, you have three fights. The rematch, Ryota Murata against Rob Brandt. That first round has to be seen to be believed. Yui Fury against Sam Peter. And a great, and I mean great, knockout, Amir Khan fighting Billy Dib. Some brief comments on all three fights first. The Ryota Murata Rob Brandt rematch. First round opens Rob Brandt is simply too fast for Ryota Murata. Right? He's just too fast. But he makes mistakes, right? The biggest mistake is he doesn't clinch Murata enough. He should fight the fight like a Floyd Mayweather would, right? In other words, pot shots, not combinations. Then get out of there. You're faster than the guy. The guy can't get going until you've gotten off. So you don't want to linger around the pocket. You don't want to give a sleeping giant an opportunity to wake up and to start landing body shots. You should be moving away after your shot. So when the other guy tries to counter, the other guy can't find you. If you stick around the pocket too long and the other guy is a heavy-handed Ryota Murata, right? And he starts to land that right hand up top, you got problems. So Rob Brandt, who in my opinion should have won this fight, just looking at the beginning of the first round, he's way too fast for Murata. Murata's a big puncher, but Murata needs to have his feet under him. In other words, the way to beat him is by moving. Force the big puncher to pick up his legs. Seems to me that they had a great crowd there. Both Brandt and Murata get caught up in the moment. And Brandt makes the fatal mistake of trading with Murata. You don't trade with a puncher. So there is Brandt. Just watch it. They're there throwing shots. When a heavy-handed guy starts to get on track, you got to clinch him. Either that or move away from him. Right? You can't hang around arm's length while the guy tees off on you. So by the middle of a great first round, Brant has lost his hand speed advantage, which was substantial. Right? Brant's rhythm is much faster than Murata's. Brant's not holding on. Brant seems to think he can trade with heavy-handed Murata, who he beat the first fight. Well, this fight, Murata is ready to trade. You get to the second round, and Brandt is just on fumes. He's trying to survive the round. The ref gives him an opportunity. But Brandt just keeps getting hit too much. Right? Had he done a Floyd Mayweather, and understand, Mayweather, when he was younger, was a freak athlete. Had he realized, okay, I'm getting off first here. I'm the faster guy here. This other guy's a little bit ponderous compared to me. When I move and this guy follows me, even when he wants to throw punches, he has to stop and get both feet under him before he starts throwing punches. So what I'm going to do to avoid getting hit with counters, to avoid getting hit with body shots, is I'm going to hit him up top. I'm going to have a left hook. I'm going to hit him with the left hook. Then I'm going to move away. Right? Not a high volume. We're both trading. Murata's able to throw that wicked left down low, that wicked right up top. Right, Rather than allow a locomotive to get on the track and to build up steam, a guy like Floyd Mayweather would make this a stop and go fight. Right? If the locomotive catches up to him, Floyd would clinch. Right? Break the tempo of the fight. You're the faster man. 
There's no reason for the faster guy to be in there trading, and then Murata gets both feet under him. Left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. I mean, Murata lands so many shots, he's on the verge of punching himself out in the second round when the ref jumps in and stops the fight. Right? Rob Brandt, in my opinion, left this one on the table. Now, we talk about high ceilings. Right? High ceilings. Now, say what you want about Yui Fury, the heavyweight. He has a very high ceiling, folks. Now, granted, he's fighting slow as molasses Sam Peter, but understand, Sam Peter has a punch. He can knock out anyone if he lands. He knocked down Vladimir Klitschko three times in a fight. Right? Klitschko got up and won the fight, but the bottom line is Sam Peter is that bull who, if he hits you, flush. The rest of the fight might be different. So here's Yui Fury, and folks, he's doing things. They look obvious. They're not. He's on his back foot. Right? He's on his. First off, he's on his back foot. He's so good with the movement that he's doing foot feints where he kind of like pretends he's going to jump in. I believe he's even setting traps. You'll notice in the fight that Fury's right hand, which he jumps in on occasion, he's throwing it wide early, right? You're watching it and you say, gee, how come he doesn't throw that punch a little bit tighter? But then at key moments when he jumps in with that right hand, it is tight. I get the feeling this is a trap. This is to get the opponent thinking, oh, this dude's throwing it wide. I can, <laughs> I can slip that punch by just being inside of it. Then, of course, Fury picks the right moment, so you're inside and you're overconfident as the opponent because you slip a wide right hand a few times. Then Fury comes right down Main Street with it. But more importantly, for purposes of this video, he does what Rob Brandt didn't do. When Fury gets inside, he ties up Sam Peter. He understands. Even though he's much faster than Sam Peter, he can't let the locomotive build up ahead of steam. You can't let these slow big punchers suddenly get confident and start to get a rhythm. So Fury comes in and clinches Sam Peter, and you're going to notice with the clinching, he does a great job of completely tying up one hand. Right? He needs to make sure that when he clinches, Fury doesn't get, excuse me, Peter doesn't get a hand loose and then let him have it. Right? So Fury, just off the movement, just off the tricks, just off the jab, right? Fury is a major threat to anyone in the heavyweight division. Right? I know Fury has laid some eggs. I myself was openly booing. His fight against Kubrat Pulev, I, I couldn't figure it out. This is boxing, a guy gets cut, then he just, what, loses composure? He's so stunned that he's cut in a fight that he loses strategy. Fury against Joseph Parker, Fury looked good at times, but you were wondering, gee, when is Fury going to bust off some combinations? You got to let your hands go, you can't be all defense. Right? Look at Ali. Look at guys with Fury's game who are on the back foot, who are moving around, who have a jab. Right? You know, Ali busted off combinations. You can't be all negative energy. You can't be all back foot. Well, Fury shows you in the Sam Peter fight that with his movement, right, with a right hand, he can change. With his ability to clinch, with his stop-and-go tactic, which Rob Brandt should have used, right? To keep an opponent from getting in a rhythm, right? Fury is troublesome. What he needs to do, though, even after this performance, in my opinion, is he needs to throw a few more flurries, right? Frame it a little bit better for the judges. In other words... <laughs> Assume that the judges aren't all looking at your footwork, dazzled by it, right? Looking at your body, there are times where Fury just faints like he's going to jump inside, throws Peter off his game. Peter is so frustrated, he starts fouling Fury. There's one moment where he could have decapitated Fury, 
right? He comes over to the ropes. He fouls Fury. He throws a punch up top. The ref warns him, right? He was frustrated. That's what guys who control pacing, who make the fight a stop and go, who don't allow the locomotive to build up ahead of steam, to make it to the station, who turn the fight into a stop and go fight, who, when the bull starts to get going, are able to grab a hand in a clinch and kill the guy's flurry, right? Guys who move well enough to not allow you to counter. In other words, Huey Fury comes in, throws a few jabs. He understands. He can't stay there. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to throw punches that have the other guy hit you back. Right? You want to throw punches and move. I thought Fury does a great job. Let's talk Amir Khan. Now, I'll say this. I'm not sure if Amir Khan beats Manny Pacquiao, even with Pacquiao at 40. And yes, I expect Pacquiao to beat Keith Thurman. Right? One man's opinion. We'll find out. Right? Um, but I'll say this. When Amir Khan's on his front foot, and he had a guy, Billy Dibb, his opponent, who wasn't a real welterweight. Right? Wasn't a real welterweight. Amir Khan was supposed to fight someone else. Billy Dibb's your last-minute replacement who isn't even from the weight class. Right? Let me just say, too, sometimes it pays not to be champion. Because if you're champion, the sanctioning body might say, whoa, whoa, wait up, champ, you can't, you can't have us recognize this fight as a title fight. You're going to have to fight someone from the weight class to do that, right? When you're a contender, you know, the sanctioning body's like, hey, player, go ahead and get paid. Where's this fight? It's in Saudi Arabia. Hey, we want to expand to that market. Represent the sport, right? Well, I'll say this. When American is the bigger man, and read into this what you may, in his corner for this fight is Alex Ariza. Right? It'll be interesting if American fights Manny Pacquiao. Whose corner is Alex Ariza going to be in? Let's be real, too. Let's follow Alex Ariza. At one point, wasn't Alex Ariza even in Floyd Mayweather's corner? Well, I'll say this. American looks a hell of a lot better when Alex Ariz is in his corner, right? He has the power this fight. Amir Khan is one of boxing's quickest handed guys, right? He has hand speed in droves. In this fight, he has the hand speed. It's explosive. The KO is masterful. You notice Amir Khan just opens up. Right? When he's fearless and he opens up, Billy Dibb does throw a punch. Amir Khan just lets it pass right in front of him. Amir Khan digs a great left hand to Billy Dibb's ribs. As part of the last combination that ends the fight, he throws a great straight short right hand. This fight, Amir Khan repeatedly is throwing very good short right hands. In other words, he's quick-handed already. When he shortens the punch, wow, he goes from lightning fast to simply blazing. You notice there's a power gap. Amir Khan's on his front foot. This isn't the Terrence Crawford fight where Amir Khan's backing up a lot. No, here, Billy Dibb is backing up a lot. Amir Khan is hunting, right? When Amir Khan has confidence, isn't worried about his chin, is on his front foot, and is letting his hands go, look out. Look great this fight. I invite everyone to look at all three of these fights in my favorites folder right now. You need to do it quickly because sometimes these fights get pulled off the net for one reason or another. Right? Not by me, but by the powers that be. So, the Rob Brand fight, that's noteworthy. That's a guy who should be clinching and pot shotting, sticking around the pocket and trading. <laughs> Big mistake. Right? The Yui Fury, Sam Peter fight. Look, Fury is frustrating. But you need to understand a guy with a high ceiling when you see one. Right? I'm looking at Fury and I'm thinking, man, you know, if this guy just puts it together, right? Why can't he be?
Deontay Wilder. Right? Understand. I'll agree. Fury's left hand is dangling a lot of the fight. He doesn't have it up like this. But understand, it's full body defense. You notice when Sam Peter throws punches from that side, and I'll agree, Sam Peter, <laughs> a lot slower handed than Deontay Wilder. I'll agree. Also, Sam Peter, shorter than Wilder. Wilder, a lot of the problem in fighting Wilder is Wilder can hit you from across the ring, right? Wilder's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, whatever he is. And I believe in the ring, he can deliver punches with power from farther away than an opponent expects, especially early in fights, right? A lot of Wilder fights end early. Guys are getting caught flush. I'm guessing the thought process is, dude is too far away to hit me then, right? So I'll agree. Fury would have to be cautious early, especially since he's relying on reflexes for defense, right? He wants to lean back and have punches move in front of him. But as you look at this fight, you realize Fury just moves too well, moves much better than Wilder. Great feet, folks. Great legs for a heavyweight. I would say the only heavyweight who has these legs, other than his cousin Tyson, would be Alexander Usyk. Right? Nobody else has legs like this. I thought Fury looks great against Sam Peter, tailor-made opponent, but he looks great. Right? Finally, Amir Khan, we'll just say when Amir Khan lays an egg, it's an egg. Right? I still remember that Breedus Prescott fight. Right? I remember Amir Khan looking good early against Danny Garcia, <laughs> then getting laid out. But when he's on his game, just like Yui Fury, you understand that if this guy is right on a given night, it doesn't matter who the opponent is, right? With Alex Ariza, Amir Khan is lethal, right? It's lethal. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.